jardin de l'Angleterre. À quel? J'ai vraiment, vraiment hâte de découvrir Kent, en particulier parce qu'il y a quelques temps, j'avais vu un une liste sur le site viral BuzzFeed qui s'appelait « The 33 most beautiful abandoned places in the world », les 33 plus beaux endroits abandonnés dans le monde. Cet article-là, je l'ai vu passer dans mon fil Facebook comme à plusieurs reprises et il a été partagé 81 milliers de fois. Et là, le numéro 14, c'est « The Munsell Sea Forts in England ». C'est ici à Kent. C'est des forts qui sont sur des pilotis qui ont été construits durant la Deuxième Guerre mondiale. Et quand ils ont été abandonnés, au milieu des années 60 environ, il y a des jeunes qui sont allés habiter là-dedans et qui sont devenus des pirates radio pour diffuser de la musique rock and roll. Puis je suis obsédée avec ça. J'ai contacté... En fait, j'ai retracé, ça n'a pas été évident, mais j'ai retracé un des anciens pirates, un ingénieur qui s'appelle Tony Pine, qui habite dans un village à environ 30 minutes d'ici. Puis son ami qui était DJ avec lui à l'époque, qui s'appelle Bob Leroy, ils ont accepté de me rencontrer demain. Mais le problème... C'est que, un, il annonce pas beau, je sais pas si je vais pouvoir sortir en mer. Et deux, même s'il fait beau, j'ai comme pas de bateau pour y aller. Puis moi, je suis fascinée par ces hommes-là. Je veux absolument les rencontrer. Donc, c'est ma mission pour demain. J'appelle mon pirate Tony Pine. Tony, I'm looking at the sky. It looks pretty nice. I'll tell you, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't. It isn't very nice. It isn't. That's <laughs> quite a blow. I'll meet you there in about six minutes. Okay, perfect. I'll be here waiting for you then. Okay, Tommy. Thanks, Tony. See you soon. Bye. 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 J'espère tellement qu'on va pouvoir y aller, on les voit. Ah, ça l'a rajouté pour de vrai. Ça nous prend un gros bateau, pas un bateau de pêche, tu sais. On peut pas se rendre avec une barque de même là, à une heure euh, là-bas. Là. On va chavirer, là, c'est sûr. Il faudrait qu'on parte avec cette affaire-là. Il y a des pêcheurs là-bas qui venaient d'arriver avec leur barque, fait que je suis allée leur demander pour voir euh, s'ils pensaient que la mer était trop agitée aujourd'hui pour sortir. Là, ils m'ont demandé où est-ce que j'allais. J'ai dit que je voulais aller au Sea Fort. Puis ils m'ont dit euh, « Depends how big is your boat ». My name is Anthony Pine, and in respect of a pirate radio station, I was an engineer. Take it as it comes. It's, uh, <laughs> you only have one life, and you've got to make the most of it. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Take it as it comes. <laughs> So you were an engineer? An engineer, yes. So what exactly were you, were you doing in the day-to-day -day in the fort? Keeping my fingers crossed that nothing went wrong. Right. And nothing broke down, and it just kept running. <laughs> and you had to get all the equipment in there? Yeah, oh, yes, yes. It was generators and transmitters and all sorts of things. Do you think we can go today? No. I, don't, I can't see anyone going out in this weather. It's... Uh, It, it doesn't be, seem too that bad. It will be very uncomfortable. And, but tomorrow, if it rains, can we go? Tomorrow, maybe, but I think the wind's even higher tomorrow. Oh, shit, so we should really try to go today, then. Oh, no, you won't get today, either. Pas question d'abandonner. On prend une chance et on va au bureau du bar mm. voir si on peut louer un bateau. Ring the bell. If we can go today, I'm willing to go today. Right. You won't be able to go now because the tide is... is um, we've, we've missed passed. it. We've missed it, you see. Okay. When the tide goes out, there's no water. 
So if you've left the harbour when the tide is like now, can't and come you back. come back, you can't come back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're stuck unless you've got wheels under the boat. Right. Yes, yeah, Glenn, now. Yes. Oh, there he is. Put Hi. a camera on that man. Okay. Oh, you have a camera on me immediately. Hi, Glenn. Hi. Um, yeah, so I just came here to see if we could rent your boat for tomorrow. Well, as long as the weather's good, I've got no problems with it. <gasps> go to the sea forts tomorrow. I hope we can go tomorrow um, so bad. What do you want to do? You just want to go there? I want to go to the around. forts. Ideally, I'd like to go in. Uh, get on. Mm. No, you want me to go? Yeah, we won't be able to go alongside. No? It'd be too, too, Why? too rough to go alongside. Well, one is too rough and two, our boat's too small. Mm. It's, uh, the, the landing is quite high, so you need quite a large yeah. vessel, mm. a tall vessel to get on. And also, it's very dangerous. The well, this man knows. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very dangerous operation. Yeah. But we can get up close and personal to him. Okay. Well, I'll be disappointed if we can't go in, but at least if I can get close to them, I'll be. Well, you get close okay. and have a, have a, you know, do some filming and have a look. Yeah. Okay. Okay, shall we call okay. that a date then, can we? He knows that anyway. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. Okay, Tony, I'm happy. See you tomorrow. Bye. On va aller au fort de It's me. Okay. Come on then, let's go. Yeah. Tony m'amène chez son ami, Bob Leroy, un des DJ pirates du temps de Radio City. Dans les années 60, Tony, Bob et leurs acolytes s'exilaient dans les phares abandonnés pour diffuser du rock and roll au grand désespoir de la BBC. Ils échappaient aux lois établies par le gouvernement qui avait le monopole sur la radiodiffusion. Uh, hi, Bob! Hello, Tony! Hi, I'm Tony! Nice to meet you! Wow! How are you? You've come a long way. Yes. Come in. OK, thank you. I'm Bob Leroy. I'm a broadcaster, and I've been living in Whistable all, all my life. I think, really, to, to be happy, to be happy and healthy and uh, try and touch people in a positive way, really. This was our home for many years. Tony and I spent uh, a lot of time on there when we were both very much younger. Wow. I've been in broadcasting all my life, uh, radio and, and television, and I must say that in terms of what we had in audience figures in those days was far greater than we can ever achieve now. Really? Absolutely. Even online with Twitter, with Facebook, Absolutely. all that? We, we, we had literally one and a half million listeners when we started the thing up and that is incredibly successful. Okay, I'm excited to see these pictures now. Okay, so this is the original Radio City book. Wow. Um, and I don't know who started it. I think it might have been Eric or Don, but everybody had a little bit of an input to it. There were yeah. bits of cuttings coming in. It's not um, exhaustive by any sense of the word, but... I'm so excited to look at this. That is the... Uh, this is original. like a piece of history, oh, that you is, know? Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Wow, with their signature. Everybody's Where's your somebody. signature? There's me. Anthony Pine, in 1966. There's Bob. Oh, there is Bob. Mm -hmm. Bob Leroy in his Radio City days. <gasps> wow. And so what pushed you to go and do this? Well, people were, we thought, entitled to hear the music they wanted to hear. The fact that we had just been through a war and we now wanted to relax. And we really had no time for petty rules and regulations. That was fine during the war, but when the war was over, we decided, the people, the public, the nation, that those rules were no longer uh, applying. And we, 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 we went about changing them. All these boxes here are all original 45 records, so you, wow. you take a box out and um, they're all alphabetical order, so all the old ah. records are here. What are these? Well, these, these are even more interesting because a lot of these, I've just dragged one out earlier. Um, these, I found the date on this, which I, sort of brings it into perspective. <gasps> So this is a, a programme that I recorded as it was being broadcast on, from the fort. 
Hello, this is Bob Leroy welcoming you to what I hope will be an enjoyable, if somewhat unusual, programme. You are tuned, tuned, tuned to Radio Sat. Yes. It's a very um, unusual thing for people to do at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and it was frowned upon by um, the public to begin with because they were told that we were pirates and we were interfering with radio frequencies and we were interfering with the rescue services. They, the government dreamt up so much bad publicity for us mm -hmm. that we actually became quite, well, quite pirate-like. We were harassed uh, by just about every authority that there is. Uh, it, it was very, very um, hairy. That was home. <laughs> the first studio. That was, the studio. that was it. The first studio. I feel like you guys were the pioneers, and that's similar to what's happening today with the youth who are, you know, um, broadcasting music online and using all these social media platforms because they don't recognize themselves in the traditional broadcasts that are on TV or Very that are on the radio. So I feel like it's history that's happening all over again, but with new platforms and with new media, you know? Yes, their, uh, their own input mm. is, is, is what it's all about. And, and expression, self-expression. People want to express their feelings. Um, and, that, and that was exactly the same with Pirate Radio. Um, because the more civilized we become, the more we probe into why we're here and how we're here and who we are. Uh, this should Thank bring you. the world together. Yeah, take care. Thanks so much, Tony. Oh. <sighs> Hi, I'm good. You? Um, I'm going to the front rooms. It's on Tower Palace. C'est tellement cute ici, là. En fait, la propriétaire, elle s'appelle Julie. C'est une styliste. Puis, d'après ce que je comprends, c'est son rêve d'avoir un, un, un bed and breakfast. Puis, elle utilise cet espace-là comme une galerie. Puis, les chambres sont à l'étage. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks. That's so cute. Some chocolate biscuit there for you as well. Mm. So, I put 8 o'clock. Okay. Is that fine? Do I have to come downstairs to grab breakfast? No, or... you can have breakfast in your room. Perfect. Tout est blanc. J'adore ça. It's so nice. Okay, you got a free mini bar, so help yourself. Free mini bar? Yes. Free mini bar. <laughs> <laughs> Red wine and white wine. Yes. A selection. On dirait comme des photos de Pinterest. Dans environ une heure et quart, sept heures et demie, je me suis fait, euh, j'ai fait une réservation au restaurant The Menis, qui m'a écrit sur Twitter pour me dire de passer chez eux. Alors, je vais manger là à cette heure. Donc là, je suis au restaurant The Minis et puis euh, je m'apprête à découvrir qu'est-ce que c'est la cuisine de Kent. Hi, my name is Jason Friedman. Uh, I'm the owner of The Minis Bar and Restaurant and I'm a chef. Uh, it's a motto that I borrowed from a friend who uses it a lot and uh, it's do it, then it's done. What's Kent cuisine? What's Kent cuisine? Yeah. Uh, it's the Garden of England. We grow lots of fruits and uh, lots of... Uh, seafood as well, you know. Okay, great. So Some great farms that, that, that produce lamb and, and beef, pigs. Okay, so what would you recommend I have on, on your menu? What are you serving? Okay, I mean, our speciality is we, we make our own, our own charcuterie. Okay, I'm in. Whatever you recommend for me, I'll, I'll have. I totally recommend both those dishes. Okay. Uh, my name's Kevin Foe, and I'm a chef and charcuterer. In life, keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Nice tabby starter. Mm. That's our plate of charcuterie. Wow, that looks delicious. Something else that I need for me. délicieux. Jusqu'à présent, Ken, ça se passe super bien. Les gens ont été très chaleureux. Je suis vraiment, vraiment contente de mon repas, de ma chambre qui est toute blanche au front room. Mais encore dans le derrière de ma tête, je sais qu'il y a tellement d'endroits à visiter dans cette région-ci, mais, mais je suis encore aussi obsédée avec Tony Pine et les Seafords que je l'étais hier. Puis là, J'espère juste que demain, quand il va faire jour, je vais pouvoir me rendre au fond. Trop, trop nice. Ça, c'est tellement la belle vie, là. Ça, c'est ma définition du bonheur. Je me suis réveillée. La première chose que j'ai fait ce matin, comme on a l'air sonné, j'ai couru aux fenêtres, j'ai ouvert les volets, j'ai regardé dehors, je me suis dit, est-ce qu'il pleut? Est-ce qu'il vente? Est-ce que je peux aller en bateau? Est-ce que je vais voir les phares? Puis là, ça a l'air à être venteux, mais il y a l'air à avoir quand même un peu de soleil aussi. un soleil comme ça depuis que je suis arrivée en Angleterre. Puis là, je veux dire, je suis pas une experte de la mer, mais je trouve que ça a l'air beau, ça. J'ai vraiment un crush sur Anthony. Il, est comme, il a vraiment l'air d'un ado, en fait, avec ses petits jeans, ses petits sneakers, son petit manteau. So, this is looking good, yeah? It's good to go out, but it's going to be quite a swell around the towers. Yeah? Because we've got a, a westerly. It's going to be about 12 mile an hour wind. Tony, are you coming with us? No, I'm not coming. No? Oh, no, my old hey. bones will not take it. Oh, no. And we have a salubrious boat lined up. Oh, yeah, so we have. Yes. Not, no, oh. we, we're not going on the pilot. Oh, what are we going on? Spartacus. Spartacus. We're going on another boat? Mm -hmm. What boat are we going a on? Boat. A bigger boat? Yeah. Oh, so that's that. safer? You could, you'd be all right. You'd be good? No, no, oh, no, 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 Tony, no, please no, come. I, I, I can't. I haven't prepared for it or anything. I no way can I go out there. No? No, and I have things to do. I have a life to lead. <laughs> we all have a life to lead. Outside of What do you this. mean you have a life? I have a, I have a very hectic life outside, yeah. outside of here. Okay, so we're going on a bigger and safer boat. Uh -huh. I like this. Et on va partir dans le Spartacus, celui qui est juste à côté, le beige et vert. Je pensais quand il a dit un gros bateau que ça allait être un gros, gros bateau. Finalement, c'est juste un petit peu plus gros. Well, I know that I'll be in good hands with Bob. Yeah, you and, are, yeah, he's fine. And uh, when I come back, I'll let you know how, how it went. Uh, oh, I should, I'll, I'll think I'll, of you. I'll be here to meet You'll you. You'll be here? I will, yes. Okay. And I will, I will follow you all the way out and all the way back. That's, um, I like to know my people get there safely and come back safely. Okay. Okay. Bob, yeah, can I give you my umbrella? You're planning on rain. Well, I don't know. It rains all the time. Okay. Oh, 
vraiment contente. Vous ne comprenez pas, ça fait combien de temps que je veux que ça se réalise, cette affaire-là. Avant d'être utilisé par les radios pirates, les forts servaient de première ligne de défense de la région durant la Deuxième Guerre mondiale. In the 60s, it was pretty run down. Now it's even more run down, but it's still got a certain magic about it. It's, this fort is five miles from the nearest land, which is Fowness Island across at Essex, and we're seven miles out from Whitstable. And when we used to come out in the 60s, you'd spend about an hour and a half getting here. So we came out on quite a fast boat. Things have changed tremendously over the years. Wow, and what does it look like inside? It's, it's very much compartmentalized. You, you have to remember that it was a functional place, so wooden cabinets, bunks, and um, the officers, believe it or not, the officers you'd probably expect that it would have a, a little bit more comfort. They had slightly more room. But um, the whole complex, you can see each one of those towers is as big as a house. Yeah, and, uh, a huge house. Uh, at the height of the wall, when the, um, the wall was really at its real peak, there were 265 men on that fort, wow. which is a lot of bodies. Generally speaking, you'd reckon to have a complement of about 120. And how do you feel when you come out here and you look at them? Well, I've been doing it all my life and I just absolutely love it. You know, it's just part of me, really. It's because I'm a broadcaster, this is where, my, where it all started for me. So everything I've ever done in radio and broadcasting has been because of this. Là, je trouve ça fascinant de voir toute la misère que se sont donné des hommes comme Bob, comme Tony, pour se rendre ici, pour amener de la nourriture, pour amener de l'eau potable, pour amener des équipements, tout ça pour diffuser de la culture, pour diffuser de la musique puis pour connecter avec d'autres gens à travers le monde, que ce soit en Inde, que ce soit au Canada, que ce soit en Angleterre. Moi, je, je viens de la faire, la route, là, puis c'est pas évident. Je pense que je vais avoir le sourire collé sur la face pendant une couple de jours. OK. Malade. J'ai essayé, j'ai passé la dernière minute à faire un check-in sur Facebook qui marche. Je suis où? Je pense que c'est le plus cool check-in que j'ai fait dans ma vie. That's it. Thanks so much. Done. Oh, done. I had, It's great. I feel It's like great. I really lived something really unique. You went back in time. Yeah. You had a throwback to how it was. Yeah, I had how a... We, you had a little glimpse of how we used to live. Yeah. And how well, crazy we were and still are. Thank you so much <laughs> for showing me and being so generous uh, with your time, lovely. OK? Lovely to see you. And I, to, I mean, Tony's not here, but no, please okay. give him loads of kisses. Do, for me. Okay. Thanks, Tammy. Take care. God bless you. Thanks. Have a good trip. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Tony! Thanks again for everything. You and Bob have been just amazing. You've come a long way for this. I hope it all goes well. Send yes. me a copy, okay? I will. I will. We'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. Okay? Yeah. All the best. You take care now, eh? Okay. okay. Bye, Tony. Bye-bye to the other. Bye-bye. <rire> je 
J'aime pas ça dire au revoir. C'est ça. <rire> Tony vient de partir, Bob aussi, puis je sais pas, je suis émotive, tu sais, j'ai l'impression que j'ai vraiment vécu quelque chose avec eux, puis qu'ils ont ouvert comme une grande page, une page super importante dans leur vie avec moi, ils me connaissent même pas. Puis là, Tony s'en va, puis il a 77 ans, puis je me disais que je leur verrais probablement plus, tu sais. acheter un macaron. I love Wistable. Wistable oysters. Je pense qu'on arrive. Puis le, le port est juste là-bas, je crois. Il y en a de l'huître. Ici. C'est vraiment trop mignon. Nous sommes arrivés! Des huîtres! These are nicer? Ok. Um, what do you eat them with? Uh, lemons or vinegar or tabasco, it's just on the table there, so it's all good. OK, perfect. So I'll have one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Bon. C'est juste une huître, là. Ça m'écart. Ça roule? OK. Bon, donc une huître de Whistable. Mmh. C'est bon, c'est super frais. En fait, j'aime ça. <rire> J'ai une révélation. J'en prendrai une autre. 